Welcome to Season 2 of the Practicing Presence Podcast, where spiritual formation is fueled through a variety of practices rather than a single prescriptive time of devotion, where we discuss different spiritual practices that help us be more present with God, others, and ourselves. How's it going, practitioners? What up? How are we doing? Hope everyone is well. We are still in Inspired um, by Rachel Held Evans. Hmm? We are now on the sixth chapter, Gospel Stories. Yeah, and this is a real interesting one. Um, because in the beginning of the chapter, she poses this question. So what is the good news? If you didn't know, gospel just means good news. Yeah. Um, and... I have a friend, I think lots of people say this, but he was the first person I heard say it enough times with enough meaningful like oomph and mm-hmm. emphasis that I was like, oh wait, that actually stuck. And this is my friend Josh Hilburn. And he says all the time, like, bro, if if your gospel's not good news, like you're just doing it wrong. Yeah. Your gospel's whack, bro. Yeah, like, if it's not good, yeah. you're doing it wrong. <clears throat> yeah. And so she says, she asked, she poses this question, what is the gospel? What is the good news? And immediately follows it up with, well, it depends on who you ask. Because absolutely it does. <laughs> of course it does. What I mean, just think about it. And she gives great examples in she the does. book. She does. I loved some of these. Um, she takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different people. Yeah. Eight different people from the Bible and tells you how different their understandings of the gospel are. Well, but then beyond that, later she goes on to talk about People she knows is experienced with the gospel and how that's different. Oh, yeah. And we'll get there for sure. Yeah. And she talks a bit here about like D.L. Moody claiming that he can fit the gospel on a coin. Yeah. Um, And what she says is, but it strikes me as fruitless to try and turn the gospel into a statement when God so clearly gave us a story or more precisely a person. Yeah. You can't. You can't distill the gospel down into one thing. Well, we've been trying forever. But you can't. Well, and that's why they don't work. Yeah. Um, I remember I was teaching. I had done, I was on staff at a church, and I had preached the morning. And basically, I had preached. You'd have thought it was Easter. Mm. Because I preached from 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, yeah. On like the importance of the resurrection. Right. Because I kept hearing all these people walking around saying, well, Jesus died for your sins. Jesus died for your sins. Jesus died for your sins. Um, no, Jesus re- lived for you, bro. <laughs> remember the cross. Remember the cross. Yeah. It's like, well, that's great because you don't get the resurrection without death. Yeah. But like if death's the end of the story, who the flip cares? Yeah. Um, she and, talks about that here too, here in a bit. And that Sunday night, everybody showed back up for church. Yeah. And I just did like a little Q&A. Like, can we talk about this a little bit? And I made the comment in the sermon that the Romans road Mm. was garbage (laughs) because it didn't include the resurrection. Yeah. When we got into that Q&A, There's a very sweet and kind little old woman that gave me a five-minute lecture Mm -hmm. about the Romans Road and how valuable it was. And at the end of her lecture to me, she recited it to me. 
and did not include the flipping resurrection again. So the resurrection, very, very important. Um, clearly, it's, it's the, the epit- reason. It's the reason that we're, we're Christians. Christians. We exist because of the resurrection. We feel very strongly about that here at Wellhouse Church. If we've messed it up in a track system, yeah, the Romans Road is a track. If we've messed up a track system, how the heck are we ever going to fit the gospel on a coin? Yeah, it's just not. It's possible. not going to happen. The beauty of the gospel is that we were given a story. Mm-hmm. Um, and, be, and I think part of it is because the beauty of stories, if you ever study stories or storytelling, the beauty of a story is that it allows the, the hearer of the story, allows the hearer to see themselves in the story. Mm. Yeah. And based on how they view themselves, they get to decide, are they the hero or the villain? Right. They get to decide, are they a main character? Are they a side character? They get to... Are they an NPC? (laughs) Yeah. They get to set that standard, and then they get to make up their own truths about it. If I tell you, hey, Jesus, the Son of God, died and rose again for your sins... So that you could have eternal life. Mm. Is that the gospel? No, that's a part of it. Ah, well done, Grasshopper. Yeah. Um, it's a part of if, the gospel. If I said to you, hey, there's a poor, homeless Jew that was a carpenter that ran around healing people and telling you the kingdom of God was at hand. Yeah. Is that the gospel? That's the gospel. It's a part of it. Yeah, I mean, it it all is in this one collective story, right? Remember, it is good news, mm-hmm. right? It's it's not a headline. The gospel is not a headline. It's true. It is good news. It's a story. It is a news story. If you were going to give it a headline, do you know what the headline would be? The kingdom of God is at hand. What what's the head? What's the thing they put above Jesus's head on the cross? Mm. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. If you were ever going to have a headline of the gospel, it's probably that. And you know why? Because historically, Israel not really a powerhouse nation. Yeah. If you were going to be king somewhere, Israel probably not the place you want to be king. If you got your pick. Fair enough. Once again, it's just another, like, the gospel is good news for the oppressed. Yeah. Um, And I feel like that is forgotten or lost when we try to put it in, you know, an elevator pitch, um, for lack of a better word or phrase. Um, Putting the gospel into an elevator pitch... um, waters down the beauty of the gospel it waters down the beauty of it and it also makes it less pliable for the individual person oh i would 1000 percent agree with that i have been guilty of using these things oh right? yeah been on mission trips used these watered down um scripted things that they teach you at base camp mm-hmm. right like i've done that yep i'm sorry but it's just not helpful it's really not i used it Guess what? It didn't work because it didn't fit the person that I was talking to. The person that I was talking to had a very different experience with who Jesus was. Yeah. Than what was being presented than what I was presenting them. Yeah. I did not meet them where they were. I was trying to bring them into the narrative that I was taught. And that's because you were taught colonization techniques. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. I mean, I was having a conversation. Absolutely right. I was having a conversation with my friend Adam today. Um, and we we're basically talking about the Bible. And he was like, man, the Old Testament's really just a book of colonization. And I was like, <laughs> you know, he's kind of not wrong. That's facts, actually. He's yeah, it's not just wrong. a book of colonization. 
Um, it's literally a small group, about 30,000 people. They come out of slavery in Egypt and just colonize. Yeah. It's what they do. Um, really, really not a great, really not a great thing. And we've taken some of those practices and we have just, especially American evangelicalism, we have colonized the heck out of people in some yeah. really heinous ways. Um, it's not the purpose of this podcast, but no, but, we, but no, 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 yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because we're forcing a gospel. Yeah. That doesn't fit. It doesn't work. When you're doing that colonization technique, you're you're not allowing the individual person to experience God on their own terms. You're trying to bring God to them on your terms. Well, and truth is, that's just what American evangelicals are doing, right? Yeah. They're trying to meet God on their own terms. And this is what I say all the time when I when I say I don't believe there's really that much objective truth in the world. Um, this is one of the things I mean because why do American evangelicals read the book as colonization and think that's a good thing? Yeah. Because we ourselves did the exact same thing exactly. to a land that was not our own, mm -hmm. came in, killed, raped, destroyed <clears throat> yeah. civilizations worth of people, yep. and then made a treaty with them that somehow somebody thought was a good idea <laughs> that we can come in and make a treaty with people because we're taking the land that was already theirs mm -hmm. and we're going to relegate them to like, one of the smallest pieces mm -hmm. of which also has the least amount of beauty. And we're just going to stick you in Oklahoma. We're just reading our own experience under the text. Yeah. And this is also to our conversation yesterday about, reading and critical thinking. Those people did not think critically about what they were doing. Mm. They received indoctrination. Right. Um, here, the gospel is a good news story because it allows the hearer to see themselves in it. That the encounter with a story is different than the encounter with, with a propositional statement. No. Jesus died for your sins. Um, my investment, connection, emotional um, attachment to the story, of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is so much more than if I just heard, hey, there's salvation in Jesus. Yeah. Both very true. One significantly more beautiful. And Rachel says it best this way. Indeed, in Scripture, no two people encounter Jesus in exactly the same way. Not once does anyone pray the sinner's prayer or ask Jesus into their heart. The good news is good for the whole world, certainly, but what makes it good varies from person to person and community to community. Liberation from sin looks different for the rich young ruler than it does for the woman caught in adultery. The good news that Jesus is the Messiah has a different impact on John the Baptist, a Jewish prophet, than it does the Ethiopian eunuch, a Gentile, and outsider. Salvation means one thing for Mary Magdalene, first to witness the resurrection, and another to the thief on the to the thief who died next to Jesus on a cross. The gospel is like a mosaic of stories, each one part of a larger story, yet beautiful and truthful all on its own. There's no formula and no blueprint. Yeah. She claims, and I think she's right. She says, when someone asks what is the gospel? The best response is, let me tell you a story. And you can pick the story. And I remember, so I will say, I've been doing this tactic for a long time um, of just telling the story. I have sermons that I've preached, uh, and I title them, Tell Your Story. Mm -hmm. um, 
that are all based on this idea of evangelism that's just telling your story. <clears throat> I went to, um, and she goes on and says, the beauty of telling the story is you can pick where you begin the story. When we went to our assessment for our denomination, or when I went to the assessment for the denomination um, to plant Wellhouse, they asked me to give a gospel presentation. Mm. Like to, they sat someone across from me and was like, "Tell them the gospel." I think I told a beautiful picture of the gospel. Mm. I told it from the life of David. Yeah. Um, because if you didn't know, David is like hands down one of the most troubling characters in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, but also yet one of the most important. <laughs> yeah. E- even by God's own words, David mm-hmm. wants to build God a house. Yeah. And God says, no, actually let's let your son do that because you got too much blood on your hands. Yeah. Um, not just war blood. Literally also murdered someone. Yeah. Um, raped a woman. Mm. Tr- like David's a troubling character. Very extremely troubling character. And yet, only person in scripture called a man after God's own heart. Mm. Um, I told the David story. They told me I did not give a good gospel presentation. Because you didn't talk about Jesus. In oh, I way. did eventually bring it up Jesus. Oh. But I didn't stay there very long because I was like, because what's the beauty of the David story? There's redemption regardless. Well, repentance. Yeah. And so I only hit Jesus for repentance. Yeah. Um, because the whole, the whole case study was this person was a person saying, you don't know the things I've done. God can't possibly love me anymore. Yeah. Let me tell you about a guy yeah. who's done way more heinous things than you could imagine. You rape somebody? You killed thousands and thousands of people in war? Yeah. Which, by the way, also a war of colonization. Yeah. Like, just the whole thing is very troubling. But I agree with her. I do this tactic. This is one of the ways I share the gospel. Yeah. But yet... I bring all that up to say that if you grew up in conservative traditions, even like this one that we're in, and I love our tradition, Mm. um, there's a reason that I haven't left. Right. Um, I want to be a part of our tradition as long as our tradition will have me. Um, But sometimes people don't like it when the gospel's a story because as Rachel so elegantly puts it, stories give us more leeway. That's right. Stories make it harder to nail down exactly what someone believes. Stories make it harder to exactly communicate all the right things so that you say the magic words to let everybody else know that you believe the things that you're supposed to believe. But that's just not the point. It's Remember not. what we were talking about on a closer look? Oh, yes. I, that's, I was hoping you'd bring it back okay. up. Yeah. Repent and be baptized. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Repent and be baptized. Yep. Nothing in that text talks about belief other than Jesus Christ being the center. Yep. Because he is and always will be. We are not Christians without Jesus. It means little Christ. We have to have him. Yep. But beyond that, there's there's really not much else that, that really matters for your salvation. Repent and be baptized. Live like Jesus lived. It's that simple. Agreed. The other thing that I will say is, and you you really need to read the rest of this book, um, the rest of the chapter, because we're going to skip over it. She has a great quote in here from Dallas Willard, yeah. which I think is fantastic. But one of the great 
takeaways from this chapter that I find or that I found that was so helpful is she puts an emphasis on the gospel stories that we're doing in a disservice to the gospel story when we summarize it in the death and resurrection of Jesus mm. because Jesus lived right and his life the modeling of him as an exemplar is every bit as important as the god like it is a part of the gospel story <laughs> yeah like Jesus lived yeah and i feel like we leave that out of gospel presentations quite often <clears throat> yeah the it's quite clunky but if like i'm trying to to summarize the best i can jesus came lived died and was resurrected and defeated death right like that's the best way and will come again right like that's the best way that i try to summarize the gospel story but you still leave so much out you leave out so much beauty you leave out the healing you leave out the 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 relinquish of the relinquishment of power um you leave out all of these amazing restoration stories and people find fighting these conflicts inside of themselves, like the rich young ruler, right? There's so much beauty in the gospel story that it, if you try to summarize it, you're going to do it injustice. If you were going to summarize it, and you only had one shot. If your shot is anything other than liberation. Yeah. You've missed it. And you only get liberation. If you read the life that Jesus lived. Thanks for listening to the Practicing Presence podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. Be sure to give us a rating and a review if you enjoyed the episode. It's free and it helps us immensely. Also, feel free to check out our other podcasts.